Hello there. Today we're having a look at landforms and processes associated with inclined strata. Um, if you have not yet looked at the landscapes associated with horizontal strata, you should do that first. When we look at landscapes, we're looking at three things interacting. The geology, that's the rock types, the rock hardness, those kind of things, and the rock structure. Agents of erosion, rivers, wind, ice and the rate of uplift due to isostatic adjustment. In grade 10 we talked about isostatic adjustment. This is the vertical movement of the crust. When erosion removes weight from the crust, the crust moves upwards. Inclined strata all start off as horizontal strata. And so we need to look at how the process of tilting the strata takes place. Well, there's two basic processes. The one is called doming, when something pushes up underneath the horizontal strata from underneath. And the other is called basining, when the horizontal strata sink into a basin shape, as shown in this diagram here. On the left we have doming, and in this case you'll find that the older strata are exposed in the middle, and the coesters that result appear facing inwards around the edge of the dome, whereas in the basin, in the case of the basin, the coesters face outwards, so we can tell straight away. This geological map of Gauteng and the bits of the surrounding provinces shows three structures, part of, of one and two others, where doming or basining has taken place. The first one is the Bushveld igneous complex, that's the green area right in the north. Then the second one is the Johannesburg granite, the round pink body in the top north of the picture. And the third one is the Friedefort dome, which is a dome shaped structure which is pushed up through the sediments in the northern free state, southern Gauteng. This is actually a meteorite impact where the granite rebounded after a huge meteorite hit this area. So the Bushveld igneous complex in the north, a massive outpouring of volcanic material over there, and then the Johannesburg granite and the Friedefort dome, all circular structures that have caused horizontal strata to become domed or basined. So let's have a look this, at this in detail, firstly looking at the Michalisberg. The Michalisberg started off as horizontal strata, and if you're not sure about horizontal strata, go back to the previous week's um, video and, and have a look at that. Right, so let's have a look at the formation of the Michalisberg. They started off as horizontal strata, and there was then this huge eruption of the Bushveld igneous complex in the north, on the left in this diagram and then other things were happening in the south at approximately the same time. There is the outpouring of lava, so thick in fact that it behaved not like volcanic rock, but by plutonic rock. But that is not what we're concerned with now, and it not only put this huge thickness on top, which was pushing down on the sediments, but it also melted them to a very great degree. So you've got this weight, massive weight, going to push the sediments down. At the same time approximately that that was happening, the Johannesburg granite was rising in the south and pushing the sediments up. So these two processes, in the south you've got doming and in the north you've got basining. Basining from the weight of the Bushveld igneous complex and doming with the emplacement of the Johannesburg dome. The net result is that erosion then exposes the hard rock layers to form coesters like the Michalisberg. And that stretches all the way from Rustenburg to Pretoria and beyond, a distance of some 80 kilometers. So it's a very substantial feature, as we can see in this photograph. And those of you who know the area of Hardebiersport Dam um, between Pretoria and Rustenburg will be very familiar with this. Next we look at the Friedefort Dome. This is a meteorite impact crater. About 2.1 billion years ago a huge meteorite hit the Earth's crust and the resulting crater 
was about 300 kilometers in diameter. But what we see today is what's called the rebound core of that crater. So right in the middle, just as if you drop a pebble into a, a mud patch, it'll cause a little bit of a splash upwards. So the granite underneath, as you can see with that arrow, up-down arrow there, get, first gets pushed down and then rebounds upwards. And that's all that we see today as the Frieda Fort Dome with the Johannesburg granite off to the left there in the diagram. So the original crater, much bigger. From space it looks like this, a circular structure. In the southeast it's covered by sediments, but we can see it very clearly in the northeast. And this is a satellite close-up. You can see a bit more detail, and then a photograph of the resulting coesters. Those bare rock faces are the um, free faces. Okay, so that gives us a good idea of how coesters are formed and of course hogsbacks which are just steeper versions of coesters formed in much the same way. We haven't mentioned folded strata where coesters and hogsbacks can form a mixed landscape environment. The processes that form the landscape once the strata is tilted are the same whether the strata were tilted by basining, doming or folding. If you're not sure of folding, go back to the grade 10 video on inclined strata.